Hey there, truckers. Welcome to Redneck and I, all things trucking and then some. Hope you enjoy the show. What did you guys all think about with that shooting and bombing or smoke bombing up in New York? Our friend Chad, his brother lives up there. And when it happened, he was the first one, you know, he started sending Chad messages about it. I was like, wait a minute. Didn't understand it at first. I'm thinking, what the heck is that? What are they talking about? Because I was in and out because I had a lot of stuff going on when this happened. And then when, when Chad and I were talking, he's like, oh, yeah, they, you know, smoke bombed. And then he just started shooting. And then hearing everything else about it, it's like, wow. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to find something that we can kind of chit chat about while we're just so just bear with me. I want to see if there's anything going on in the country that we haven't talked about. I know we were talking a little bit about the the shooting in that in um, New York in the subway. And now I know they say the subway is like, you know the corner or the backbone of, you know, New York. It's the only way to get around up there. I couldn't tell you. I've never been in downtown New York. I've been in New York, but never in downtown New York, which I'm good with that. Because the way I understand it, it's not the best place to be anyways. Like I said, a friend of ours, his brother lives up there. So he was real good about um, calling and letting him know what happened and what he heard about up there. But, you know, the last I knew, they hadn't found the guy yet. I don't know if that's true or not. So if it isn't, please let me know. Because, you know, I'm not real sure. Okay. Here's another one. Oh, this just gives me chills. Trucker's terrifying close call with a tornado caught on video by the storm chasers. Yikes. I know once um, Greg was out one time and this has been a no oh, quite a few years ago and where he was at for the night um there was a tornado in the area and they you know he got the winds and all that from it but it unfortunately he did not have any problems with it so that was a good thing okay here's here's a funny one for y'all you're gonna like this turkey cash truck Turkey crashes through windshield, striking truck driver's face. And I mean, the hole in this windshield, it's a Freightliner Cascadia, it looks like, and the hole in this windshield. I was a big turkey. Let's see. Um, the truck driver suffered minor injuries on Tuesday when she, she struck a turkey on an Ohio roadway. Uh-oh. Remember, I live in Ohio. The incident occurred on Gala County, Ohio, around 8.40 a.m. on U.S. Route 35 near milepost 11, about a mile east of State Route 350. According to Highway State Highway Patrol, the truck driver was hauling a load of commercial dog food when she struck a turkey in the roadway. The turkey went through the driver's windshield and struck the driver's face. The truck crashed off the roadway, but no other vehicles were involved. The truck driver suffered minor, fa minor facial injuries but was not transported to the hospital. Wow, thank God for that. You know, it could have been a lot worse. It could have knocked her out. She could have hurt many, many people. You know, something along those lines. You know, it's kind of tragic that something like that happens, but it's, it's part of life. It's part of, you know, the whole driving scenario. So... We, we understand how that happens. I mean, you can hit anything on the road and cause a problem. So, but yeah, I'm just kind of scrolling through here and see if there's anything else that catches my eye that, you know. Okay, this is from yesterday at 438. You know, Minnesota interstate closed after high winds blow over nine trucks. They give you those warnings to pull, get off the road if you're, High track, mostly boxes, and they're showing two of them here that I'm seeing in the picture. But, yeah, that would definitely be a ride. But what really got me was when I first seen this 
this headline here, Firefighter Dead, Officer Injured by Semi-Truck While Responding to Previous Wreck. I didn't read the article, and I probably should have. You know, it's tragic that anybody loses their life when it involves, you know, anything. But it says the firefighter and a police officer were struck by a semi-truck while responding to a previous wreck in Ohio on Monday afternoon. Um, the accident happened on April 11th in West Salem just before 4 p.m. According to the Akron Be Beaker Journal, troopers and fire crews responded to a single vehicle wreck in the southbound lanes of Interstate 71 and were filling out paperwork when an oncoming semi-truck semi struck the left rear of the fire engine at the scene, pushing it into the police cruiser and the vehicle involved in the initial wreck. 37-year-old trooper Stephen Hill and Lieutenant Philip Wigel were also struck in the accident. Wigel was killed at the scene and Hill was transported to a nearby hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Wow, and it shows a picture of the so there's a picture of the cruiser too and it says a semi-truck driven by 41 year old um, last name Hernandez then skipped off the roadway and into some nearby trees Hernandez was transported to a nearby hospital with minor injuries while crews worked to lift the rig out of the wooded area the crash is still under investigation and no further information regarding situations issued or reasons for the crash have been released Wow. I'm going to say that cell phone or not on the dash probably had something to do with that. Just my idea. I'm not saying it did. You know, because like we were talking earlier, that kind of, you know, cell phones and that is a great thing because it keeps you in contact with your friends and family. But it also can be a very, very bad thing too because of the fact, you know, here you go. You're distracted. Something like that happens. Who knows, you know, may never know. We'll have to keep an eye out for this one to see if we see anything else about it just to find out if there is something, if that was what happened. So we'll have to work on that and keep an eye out for it. I'm going to have to keep you know, let's see. I'm going to like that just so I can see if there's anything else. I don't see, because where this happened at, because you know we're about an hour and a half from Akron. And this is in that general area because it was Akron Beacon, Beacon, so. But I'm going to have to pull it up online and see. And I'll have to bring it to you next week and let you know if they had anything and what happened. Let's see what else. Poof. Ooh. Here's another one. I don't really look at this site that often. But I guess I'm going to have to start looking into it a little bit more only for the fact I want to, you know, keep up on this. So when we are talking, we have a chance to look at over some of these things. Okay. This one was yesterday at 3.01 p.m. when this was posted. Um, abrupt stop for previous, for previous wreck causes load to fatally pierce cab. When I was growing up, we had, my dad had a friend that drove truck and he drove flatbed. And he was hauling pipe and a car stopped in front of him. No bulkhead, you know, and for the longest time you didn't work. You weren't required to have a bulkhead. Now this one, you know, here it again, looks like a freight liner. Um, it's not pretty. He was hauling angle and round stock and tubing and, but, um, my dad's friend, he was killed when the accident happened. So, I mean, I knew his son because him and I were real close in age. And my dad used to work on his truck, so that's how I knew a lot of people. Um, but it goes on to, this is, in, and it's sad when you see that, you know, a fellow driver lost her life over something like this. So the trucker is dead after his load pierced his cab during an abrupt stop in AC conditions early on Tuesday morning. The crash happened in um, Unida County, Wyoming, just after 2 a.m. on westbound Interstate 80. Um, according to KPVI News, 47-year-old, I'm not even going to try to say his name, 
Cat, his last name's Castro, crested a hill on I-80 in icy conditions and then braked to avoid previous crashes. As he braked, his trailer hauling heavy metal piping and I-beams jackknifed, causing the rig to slide off the road. The truck's tires then became lodged in the soft dirt on the side of the road, causing the truck to come to an abrupt stop. The stop caused the heavy load to become dislodged and the metal pierced through the truck cab. Wow. I can only, you know, whew. It goes on to, Castro was killed in, in the incident and was pronounced dead at scene. Highway Patrol says that the load was secured with only a nylon strap and the investigating equipment and is investigating equipment failure as a con contributing factor to the de in the crash. Four other semi trucks wrecked at the same stretch of road in the icy conditions. Now, this is my thoughts. Why would you say it was, you know, equipment failure when the road was icy? You know, how can you honestly, it's just, okay, no soapbox, not yelling, not going to get on the rant with that because it's just like, no, you can't, you just, you just can't, you can't blame that on something like that. I can't see where, you know, crested a hill when there was other crashes and he did what, he hit the brakes. He slid off the road. Yeah, I mean... Sometimes I was hauling structural one time out of um, Beaver Falls, PA, and I was up on 70, was it 70, 70, anyways, no, not 70, 79, and I was coming across into, I was in PA and I was just coming into West Virginia, I was almost at the West Virginia mark, or maybe I just came across, and part of the structural stuff came off, it broke a strap. Now, mind you, I was not allowed to put chains on it. It was all strapped down. It was a preloaded trailer. Thank God I was in the right-hand lane. And when it came off, it went over the edge of the, the embankment. So that was like, you know, a blessing and a curse all in the same time because I've never lost a load before. I was not sighted. So that was like, you know, hooray for me because I did not get sighted for that. Um, the company... I think they got fined for it because I had work. I had the the paperwork where it said straps only. Me, I would have had chains on it, but it was going out to Indianapolis to a building that was being constructed. I think it's for a parking lot at an air at the airport, honestly. So I mean that was one of those things that just kind of happened, and thankfully I've never had that happen again. And hopefully it never happens ever again. But you just never know. You know, things happen. You just can't, you know, control everything that happens in your life. So. So that leads me to the next question I'm going to ask you guys. Have you ever lost a load like that? Anything like that happened to you that, you know, caused your load to come off? I mean, I've had loads shift and slide. I had one that I thought was going to come off out on 30 out in Dalton, Ohio, and it's a two-lane road. Well, four-lane now, I guess. But I had a car cut me off, cut over in front of me, and there was like four or five of us coming in, and I had a single one, because of course I always did. It's a flatbed. But anyways, I had a dogs in their bones or balls anyways um had a single one and greg was like two or three trucks ahead of me next thing you know this car whipped over i seen him come up on my left hand side and went on the road wanted to cut off on a road to my right and now now they have a red light at that light or at that road but cut over in front of me and it was like a little geo metro it was just a little car and i lost it i thought i ran it over at the same time i hit the brakes and I heard the, the snap of the coil or the, you know, the jerk of it when it slid. Now, my dad always told me that when you put, put your chains on, you know, always add an extra one just to be on the safe side. Too many never hurts. Not enough can kill you. 
So, um, I got off the road and that's what I yelled at Greg on the radio and told him, I says, I think I just, you know, at first off, I thought I ran over a car until I seen it, but, um, he pulled off and I got up and pulled up behind him and we looked, <laughs> looked under the trailer. I didn't lose the coil, but I did put it in the floor because it came off the racks and slid and just kind of dug down in the coil racks dug in. It actually snapped um, tie downs, broke chains. So he got up in the trailer and he rechained it enough to get it back to the shop and told them they had to fix it. So they moved it, got it repositioned, and delivered it. A couple of days later, that is. But that was a scary situation. So. But yeah, that's my kind of, you know, things that's happened to me. Now, mind you, I've even wrecked a truck. But again, that was not my fault. I didn't think I'd ever go back to driving after that. But I did. So that's good. So. But let's see. What can we talk about now? All right, so I'm not even getting into the wrecking of the truck thing. No, I have pictures. I'll, I'll, we'll talk about that next week or something. And that way I'll have my pictures dug and I can show you some of them. Okay. Um, let's see what else we can find to talk about. We have the guard cat here. Y'all can see her. She always has to be on the desk. Right, Ghost Kitty? Can you say hi? Alright. So. Let's see. <laughs> well, I think we're getting down, done this for about an hour, and it's been kind of one of those things where there hasn't been much interaction. I knew it was kind of a, a slow start to it because of the fact, the time instance that didn't know is so screwy. And that was backwards where I thought it was one way and it was actually completely different. So, um, but I want to, again, thank our sponsors. We have DPF Regeneration at webakem.com. Give Miss Hattie a call and she can take care of all your DPF filter issues. That's at 800-634-3010. And she actually is a woman-owned and family-run business. She, I believe, the last time I spoke with her, oh, let's see. I think she's been in business since the early 80s, but I can't, can't quote, don't quote me on that one because I'm not real sure. Because I can't remember for sure. So, let's see. But, we also have, let's see what else we can talk about here. We'll go until about 8.30 because it's just one of those. Oh, that's clear. That's from April 11th. Oh, drivers crossing into Texas experience the 10 to 20 hours wait times almost immediately following in the announcement. And the announcement they're talking about is the far bridge to Mexico goes unopened Monday as truckers protest new increased inspections. Shoo. Let's see what that all that's all about. Okay. Okay, the Far International Bridge did not open to traffic on Monday as truckers blocked access in protest of new cross-border inspection rules. 
drivers in Mexico blocked access to the bridge from um, Reynoso, Mexico into Texas on Monday, April 11th, prompting, uh, prompting officers to close the southbound lanes from Texas into um, Reynoso. I know I'm not saying that correct. Although the bridge typically opens at 6 a.m. on Mondays, the protests forced traffic to come to a halt and the bridge was not opened at all. Everything, everything Ludbach reports that the drivers blocking the bridge are protesting Texas Governor Greg Abbott's announcement late last night, notifying drivers that all commercial traffic entering Texas from Mexico will now be subject to an enhanced safety inspections of vehicles as they cross points of entry into Texas. I've seen some of the trucks come out of Mexico into Texas down there around Laredo and Brownsville. It's crazy. You know, there is no excuse. They should not. Yeah, they, I, I can see why he would do that. Why Governor Abbott would say, no, we need to have better, you know, inspections on those trucks because they're pretty ragged looking. Okay, the new inspection will be conducted in addition to the typical federal inspection at the port of entry. Increased wait times between 10 to 20 hours have already been felt by, dry, from, by truckers entering the country, a fact which Governor Abbott admitted would be a result of the new inspection during the new conference. Now I know in advance this is going to dramatically slow traffic from Mexico into Texas, he said at the conference. Abbott says that the new inspections are in response to the Biden administration's plans to revoke Title 42 rules at the end of May. Title 42 allowed U.S. Off officials to send Mexican citizens seeking asylum back to Mexico in order to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Abbott says that with a full with the rule revoked, approximately 18,000 undocumented immigrants will begin attempts to cross the border into the U.S. each day. A zero tolerance policy for unsafe vehicles for smuggling migrants across the border is being implemented immediately. Cartels use vehicles, many of them dangerous commercial trucks, to smuggle immigrants, deadly fentanyl, and other illegal cargo into Texas and onto roadways, Abbott said. Go Governor Abbott. I tell you what, I think if all of our governors in every state stood up for their their state, phew, this country would be right back to where it's supposed to be. Back in a good rolling system. And not, you know, like it is. It's been kind of crazy the way things have been going with it all. So, you know, phew. So what are your guys' thoughts on that? And Governor Abbott, you know, putting a halt to it and making them do better and be better. So, okay, number to call in is 515-602-9731. Want to hear from you. Let me know what you're thinking, what you're, you know, what you're doing out there tonight. I know, you know, for most of you, it's, you know, 8 o'clock at night. Could be 7 o'clock. Could be later or earlier, I mean. I'm on the East Coast because, like I said, I'm in Ohio. So that kind of threw a wrench in my, you know, logging on because my time frame was all kind of crazy. So, but, like I said, I'm going to go to probably uh, about 8.30. We haven't had a lot of interaction. I know it's trying to get this up and running. I knew it was going to be like this today, trying to get things flowing. But, like I said earlier... This is new for all of us doing a women of redneck and eyes is what, you know, what we're calling it because it's not, it's not just about women drivers. It's about, you know, it's a lot of different things when it comes to trucking, you know, you could be a dispatcher that has to deal with the men, you know, cause some of them can be a little bit outspoken, a little more pushy. So let me know what you think. You know, if you don't want to call in, that's fine. Send us a message on Facebook. You know, right now, like I said, 
I don't do YouTube, so unfortunately we won't have anything on YouTube. But I will have it set up for Facebook every Wednesday, and we're going to be doing every Wednesday at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And it's going to be about a lot of us women drivers, or wives of drivers, or mothers, or sisters, or daughters. Give us a call. Okay, we got a caller. And I believe, don't quote me, but I believe this might be Miss Holly. <laughs> How are you, Holly? You got it. 